All right, let's do it. Well, we got, it's the kind of game that, you know, on paper you should win, but coaches kind of, you know, coaches never think that way. Yeah, we just worry about trying to get, get better in practice, uh, prepare for your opponent, uh, and get better in practice. Uh, so, yeah. I think if you deviate your preparation, and the way you do things as a coach, and your players will follow suit. So uh, I'm liable to be more intense the next two days in practice. Uh, just to so my players know it's not okay uh, to uh, judge our opponent by their record. So say, the same goes if you're playing with the number one team in the country. You know, you got to go back to preparation the same way. The problem for you as a coach is. You guys won't pay a lot more attention if you're playing the number one team. So, uh, you know, I think, you know, my message to our guys is, I thought Temple was really ready to play, and I ask them why. Well, we'll pick the win. We're ranked in the top 25, and we'll pick the win our conference. So I think that, you know, our guys have to respect that everybody in our conference, as long as we're in first place, or as long as we were picked in the league, is, as long as we're in the top 25, is going to be ready to play against us. Uh, and they're going to be focused. Just like DePaul was at Villanova the other night. Is that the mindset you have to and part on these kids to be You can try. Not the hunted. But you and I have talked about yeah. that. <laughs> you, know, you can try a lot of things and make sure your guys are always, play, always focused and always ready to play. Uh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So we'll see. We'll see. You know, I, I try to just really stay focused on improving in practice and making sure our guys are pushing forward. So I, I, I'm a big believer. You got to get better. You got to you got to get better every day. You got to get better week by week. Uh, it just gets harder and harder to win games. Uh, and you got to evolve as a team. And there's areas where we're always looking to improve. Uh, you know, it's so like if you look at our our road games, we're not scoring enough points at Butler, at Iowa State, even though we won at Temple. Uh, you know, those, those, those are areas, that's, uh, that's one area where we, so we've got to get better executing against great defense. So you're always trying to figure out some way where you can improve. So that, that, that's all I'm focused on. You talked about how important the bench is for this team. Was it big for those guys to go on the road and have a, a game where they were able to help you out like they did? Yeah, I thought yeah, we needed every bucket we could, so. Yeah, yeah I, I would say somewhere near 33% of our offense probably came from our bench. 18 uh, points. In that game, so uh, they, we needed every one of them as well. So uh, I just think for, I've said this all along, though those guys are the key. Those guys are a big key for us. So the more they, uh, especially, you know, Quad's been around, but the rest of them, uh, especially the freshman trade, Aaron, uh, but even Justin, you know, contributing in big games uh, in this season, you know, those guys being in those kind of games, you would hope that it's going to just make them better players. So the next time they're at that, in that moment, in that game on the road, uh, that they're just going, they're going to be more comfortable. Is Trey maybe a little farther along than than you thought it that this early well, in the red, process? He's redshirted, so he had the advantage of being in practice. But Trey, I, I'll tell you. Uh, aptitude is, a, is the most, so it's probably the, the, the hardest thing to recruit because you have no idea what, what somebody's aptitude to learn is until you get them in practice. But it's probably the most important thing for a player to improve. Uh, and I, I would tip all the guys I've ever coached, Kenyon Martin has had the best. His, his ability to learn and apply it to his game uh, was, uh, was the reason he developed the way he did. It's just unbelievable. Trey Scott has tremendous aptitude. Uh, he runs around and makes rotations uh, that you, you did on the defensive end that only seniors usually do. On the offensive end, he's quickly uh, he's learning how to adjust his game, his skill level right now to being effective. Uh, and, and so I give him some things. He's able to apply. He understands what I'm, what, why I'm giving him what I'm giving him right now, and he can apply it, which will, it, it allows me to play him because he, he's an effective player. But a lot of that's mental. He's tremendous aptitude. So no, 
you, get it, you, you don't know that really until you get a guy. At what point in your coaching career did you become such a strong advocate of deflections? Um, you know, we, when, when I was with Coach Huggins, we didn't chart deflections, but obviously we played so hard on the defensive end. Um, that, uh, but, you know, Coach Patino, the deflection chart originated with Hubie Brown. Uh, and working for Coach, you know, for Coach Patino, learning the history of the deflection chart and the importance of the deflection chart. And obviously taking it with me to Murray State. You know, it's just it's a way to chart your effort. Because two things you can't do unless you try. Get a deflection, get a rebound. Because it takes effort to, to block a shot or deflect a pass. It takes effort to pick up a loose ball. Uh, it takes effort to go get a rebound. So those are two, two areas uh, that, that chart your effort, how hard your team is playing. And it's important that your guys understand that. So again, we we, we were we won on the road. We got uh, 33 deflections. We didn't get to 40. We weren't pressing. We were scared to do too much trapping because they hurt West Virginia. When, uh, when they passed out of it. They banged in a lot of threes. Uh, but without a lot of trapping and without a lot of uh, we didn't we tried we didn't really do a lot of confusion stuff on defense. We still got 33 because our, our energy was tremendous. So we watched the film with our team, and you can, and I'm showing this is why we're getting deflections. We were denying passes that they didn't throw because we were going to get a deflection. It's, you know, it's like sales, you can't, you know, you, you, it takes, what they say in sales, it takes 10 calls to get uh, four, four return visits to get two sales. So you got you got to try all the time. You're not just you can't just try every once in a while and get one. You're not going to get a deflection every time you try to get in the passing lane. So if you're in the passing lane all the time and you're pressuring the ball all the time, you're, you're going to get around 40 uh, or in the 30s. So it's just a way to chart out. So is that such a good indication? Of what you're uh, it's amazing. <laughs> uh, you know, Hubie Brown's the originator would say that if you get if you get your number, you're going to win 95% of your games. Probably, it disrupt. It, it shows that you're disrupting the other team's offense, uh, and you're creating. And that's one aspect of it. The other thing is, if you look at a game like our Temple game, some of the baskets we got uh, off Trey Scott's steal on an inbound, uh, and then Jer and then the pass ahead to uh, Mike Jacob for a layup. That's, that's, that basket right there is like, it's gold. <laughs> you know, you're trying to grind it out. Nobody can make an open shot, miss some free throws, but you also, you get a layup right there. And if you don't get that layup, they may get a, they may bang in a three. Uh, so it, 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 it's, it, it, it affects the game in a whole lot of ways. You get transition baskets, you disrupt the other team. Take them out of their flow, which when the, when the team's out of their flow, they tend to shoot a lower percentage. Teams are comfortable running their offense. They get what they want. They get what they practice. And when they get what they practice, that's when they're going to shoot a higher percentage. So it just shows you're taking things away from your opponent. If you're not taking things away from your opponent, they're getting what they want. They're going to find a rhythm, especially a very good team. They'll hurt you. They can hurt you really bad. So. Uh, it's something that's been really successful, I think, for most of the coaches that I know that use it uh, in the way the guys, you know, from, from my, you know, my, whether it's myself, or Kevin Willard, or, you know, some of the guys on the coach of the team use it. Most of the players, when they get in, the players know about the, how much uh, they, they learn. They learn. They don't use well, they learn. Again. No, it'll be, you know, they learn because it's, we, we, we chart deflect, like, our guys know they're, it's on the board at all times. So when they come in at halftime, they're looking because they when they come in at halftime. It's your name and how many deflections you have, and it's up there after the game. And in between games, it's always up there. It's up there who's leading the team in deflections. It's also we, we break it down per minute play. So uh, you know it's how many you're getting per minute you play because you can't get them from the bench. 
we talk to them about it all the time. All the time. And they, and they, you know, they, so what happens is they, they're into it. You know, they're, they're always looking. They're also always hustling uh, T.J. Wolf, who's in charge of deflections. Everybody's always hustling him, <laughs> trying to get, you know, saying that they had three instead of two or you know, five instead of three. If, if you don't get a certain amount of deflections, do you have to block anything? No, we, we, don't, we don't go that far, but it might, it might affect your playing time, especially in conference play in crucial situations. And what's that number when you get 40 deflections? We haven't lost in five years. Five years. But like, you know, Jimmy Brown would say you're going to win 95% of your games if you get to your, your deflection. Can you uh, talk a little bit more about Jacob and what he brings? Like, Offense. <laughs> Explosive plays and he well, can make things happen. Yeah, but, you know, look, if you're going to be a real team, you got to have an answer. You know, you got to have a guy that can get you a basket that you can go to, that can create offense and you can deliver. Uh, you know, aside from Jacob, he's extremely sound in the defensive end. Uh, he's an extremely intelligent player. But he's evolving as a go to guy on offense. I think that's important. I think you got to have that as a great team. You gotta have a guy that can that you can get a man, get you a basket or get get fouled uh, and punch him. So you look at two two wins, Iowa State he gets fouled, and then at the end of the foul line, Marshall he bangs in a three, gets his to overtime so we can win the game. You know, so trying to get him to evolve in that role is it's, it's big for us going forward. I was talking to one of the one of the scouts here tonight. I'm real impressed with him. What's his role for? You guys measure him? He, he's a good athlete. He's, I will tell you, Jacob will tell you, he's lost weight from last year. Body fast way down. Mike Rayfeld's done a tremendous job with him. You know, usually a guy makes a huge jump freshman to sophomore year. It's because that's, you got them starting in April to change their body. Versus when you get them in in the summer, you know, some, somewhere in mid-summer, you don't have as much time. They're just trying to, they're, they're in shock whatever you're hitting them with versus that, that that summer between freshman and sophomore year. You see a guy like he and Justin made a big, big jump. And with slow Trey's jump, I think is you know, he, he got it back and you know, he developed mono and lost 27 pounds. And he, it took him a while to get all that back. But Jake, Jake's a much better athlete this year because his body fell way down. Coach, one last one. He might be off the center buns too. <laughs> yeah, Mike, hey, Mike, Mike works really hard with our guys. He really, in all seriousness, he works really hard with our guys. On, uh, trying to, you think if you just inundate them with nutrition stuff, you know, young kids are only gonna, yeah, they're, they're gonna act like they're not listening, but the serious ones, they're listening. And it, 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 it takes time to get them to understand the value of mustard instead of mayonnaise. Steve Logan was a big man age guy. Never forget to look on his face when I told him how bad he was. Justin Jennifer, 40% from three, three to one assist to turnover. Like, what more can you ask out of him so far this year? Uh, better defense on a three point line. Okay. And he knows that. Okay. You know, one, one thing for Justin is uh, I told him we got this in common. Can't recover as well to shooters at five foot seven. So if you're guarding a shooter, you can't wander away too much and help or position yourself for a steal because you can't get back yeah. the way your teammates can get back. Trey Scott can get back in one stride, right. <laughs> in one jump. Yeah. You know, Jacob Evans, you know, when you, when you don't have the height, if you're on a shooter, you gotta be careful. Wandering off, trying to position yourself to maybe steal the ball from a dribble. But you just can't get back to that shooter. So it's just an area where you know he, he'll he'll get better at it. He, he'll understand, uh, and he's positioned himself to try to help his team. He's just got to be careful because you're guarding a great shooter uh, it, it, that, that, can, that can change the game. Again, man. So, he's, but he continues to get better. His attitude is great, uh, and I'll predict to him he's going to have a monster game for us at some point here in a big game and win us a game. Looks like him and Sam started bringing in maybe more NBA concepts into the league. What, what do they bring? Uh, well, I think it brings credibility to your league. 
for our league, yeah, Tucker Smith joins the league. Mike Duncan joins the league. Uh, I haven't slept much. I know other guys joins the league. Uh, but I was, uh, you know, Coach Dunleavy, NBA player, 17 years in the NBA, and Coach uh, decides that I believe because spending time with his, his son is coaching at Dillon uh, he got interested in the college game. So uh, it's great for basketball that, that uh, somebody like him is back. He's not coaching for the money. He's coaching for the enjoyment. Uh, but, uh, I've gotten a chance to get to, to speak to him. Very humble guy. Very, very, just a great guy. Great guy. So you, know, you meet somebody who's been who's won an NBA title as a coach. You wonder if he's ever going to say hi to him. So that was just a really good person.